Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about all of the things going on with some of the different changes in uh, the NCAA and in college football in general, mostly unlimited coaching staffs and what that kind of entails for the future of college football and how the gap between the haves and the have-nots are growing even more uh, day by day. But let's jump into quarterbacks recruiting and it's a crazy world out there in recruiting. Uh, it's a very b much of a battle. It's a little bit of a nimble dance. You got to figure out how to build the staff, what moves to make at the right times. You know, you don't want to have guys committed too early because then may they might decommit and you have a ton of people going after them. You don't want guys to commit too late because then you might have missed the ship and then they might have already committed or are locked in with another school. So, Tons of stuff uh, can kind of go wrong in this recruiting world, but the reality is one thing that has kind of taken form over the last couple of years is get that really highly rated quarterback on board early and then just let others follow um, because that is obviously going to be the linchpin of your class and it can really kickstart a lot of things going into the rest of your recruiting cycle. So it's a really, really interesting thing that's kind of going on throughout the recruiting world. And one of the things that kind of not made me hip to this, this was always a thing, but that guy right there was a huge, huge piece for Texas. Uh, he was he came in relatively early on in the cycle. Uh, he committed with, I believe, still the only tweet that he has ever tweeted uh, was his commitment to Texas. And guys just started flowing in. Uh, the Jonte Cooks of the world, the DeAndre Moore uh, of the world, all of these guys immediately started looking at Texas. And it's a real thing. You know, it's not necessarily just because he had that number one next to his name or because his name was Manning, but I absolutely can promise you that helped. The reality is all these guys want to play with elite quarterbacks. The quarterback is the, the linchpin of the team. He is the center of the team. He is the leader of the team. And getting as many of those guys or getting the right guy on your recruiting class immediately and then just letting everyone else follow him has kind of been the path and it's happened you know across a ton of different recruiting classes it's happening obviously with Arch Manning last recruiting class but happened with Bryce Underwood this upcoming recruiting class and it's happening with that guy right there Tavian St. Clair is absolutely someone that has been as big a part of what this Ohio State class is as anyone. He has been in Columbus so many different times when big time recruits are there, just making sure that he's one extra recruiter for Ohio State to use during those visits. And it's a really, really good way to go about business. I mean, we talk about relating to recruits and how coaches can go about that and how it's getting more and more difficult, let's be totally honest, to relate to all of these recruits. And the people that can do it the best are the guys that are going through it, going through the same thing at the same time. You know, Tavian St. Clair has heard the same pitches from a lot of the same coaches as a lot of the guys walking through Ohio State's doors. So he can tell them, you know, I know what you're hearing from Oregon. I, I know what you're hearing from Michigan. I know what you're hearing from Georgia or Texas, but this is the place to be. And I can tell you why, because I have my reason why, and I think that's a, a huge thing, especially coming from that position, because he's the position. He knows that all of the eyes are going to be on him the second that he steps on campus, and if he's that confident to go to this university, I'd be pretty confident too, I'll be totally honest. So it'll be fascinating to kind of watch this develop over time, but nine of the 20 participants in the Elite 11 Finals have made their decision before the 2023 season, so they were locked up before their uh junior before your, their senior season excuse me so a lot of these guys like to get it done before their senior season go in with kind of a clear mind and then just let things roll from there um and it it's a really really good idea because you can find your way onto campus a couple of times when you need to throughout the season you can focus on your high school uh, career obviously coming to a close here pretty soon so you want to put as much as you can into those uh, in that into that last year, and it really does help a ton of things. So it'll be fascinating to kind of watch all of this develop. But the reality is, everyone wants to play with a good quarterback. Um, whether you're a wide receiver, a running back, an offensive lineman, or a defensive lineman, there are many defensive players that started looking in the direction of Texas when Arch Manning signed, or started looking in the direction of LSU when Bryce Underwood signed because that stuff really matters. It makes you believe that this program is heading in the right direction because they've nailed down the most important part of their program going forward, which is the quarterback position. So this has been happening across this class in particular a lot. Um, obviously, we talked about Tavian St. Clair. He is building out 
one of the best offensive or one of the best classes Ohio State has ever put together. He is a huge part of that. I can promise you that. Uh, Julian Lewis is another one where USC uh, class really took off right after he committed. It has taken a step back, let's be totally honest. Lost guys like Justice Terry, Isaiah Gibson, Hilton Stubbs did decommit yesterday, so not necessarily everything going perfectly for USC, but it doesn't change that there was a boost when he joined on, and he is someone that is super important to their, excuse me, is super important to their recruiting efforts going forward. So it'll be fascinating to kind of watch that develop. I think he's someone that, you really hope you can keep on that uh, re- in that recruiting class because if you can, guys are going to come with them. But the reality is, you know, Auburn's pushing really hard, Colorado's pushing really hard, so USC is going to have to keep Julian Lewis in the group because it could get a little bit ugly if he doesn't, frankly. Um, and then you have a couple other guys that absolutely have helped their um, recruiting classes get to the places that they are, and one of them is Kevin Sperry. He has been committed to OU for quite some time that guy right there he's been uh, committed for quite some time I think the second uh, longest commitment of the elite 11 guys so of the elite guys in the country he's been committed for a really really long while and has been up to Norman a number of times throughout that time especially on those big recruiting weekends and has made his case and he's done a really really good job OU's class is top 10 in the country they're doing really really good stuff on both sides of the ball so He's doing just fine. He just added actually two really awesome targets that he's going to love throwing to in the future, Emmanuel Choice being one of them. So it's going to be incredible to watch that unfold. And then the other guy that is absolutely helping his class is KJ Lacey. He was committed to Texas very, very early on. And there are a lot of top uh, flight re- are looking at Texas right now. Decorium Moore, one of them. In fact, we'll talk about him next segment. But Decorium Moore, you have Kalik uh, Lockett, you have Jamie French. All those guys, it seems like Texas is leading on. It wouldn't be that case if uh, KJ Lacey was not in this class um, because they know who he is. They know how confident he is and how accurate he is is probably the most important part of that. So it'll be fascinating to watch two of the top four quarterbacks and seven of the top uh, 11 quarterbacks in the 2026 class have already committed. So it gives you an idea. This is going to continue into the next class. We talked about Bryce Underwood. He's played a huge part in what LSU has done early on in this class, um, bringing in Harlem Berry. They got Decorian Moore. He has since decommitted, but the reality is he is a huge person and definitely will be a big time recruiter for them so this is not something that is going to go away by any means in fact I would bet this is going to become more and more a part of the deal and frankly part of this is just kind of the way of recruiting if you're a quarterback you almost need to lock down your spot before your senior season because some of these schools move right along to the next class right at uh, the start of their season because that's the way quarterback recruiting works. You want to get that guy on uh, on your team as quickly as possible and in that class as quickly as possible. So sometimes you might just miss the boat. Um, and that's the thing that you kind of have to balance between making the right decisions, but also not missing out on a shot to play for the team that you really want to play for. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how this develops, how everything kind of goes about it. But the reality is, Recruiting is a constant fight. You're never going to be comfortable with the uh, commitment. You're never going to feel like you totally have a guy until they fully signed. Let's just be totally honest. But it doesn't change that when you have a quarterback, it makes things infinitely easier. Um, It puts you, you know, about two miles ahead of everyone in the race. So you have that ability to bring in guys, to add some really, really high level guys. And not only that, but there are certain restrictions on what coaches can do in the recruiting world. There's not as much on high school kids uh, talking and, you know, quote unquote, recruiting other high school kids during that time. So you can do it uh, 365 days a year if you're a high school senior. And that's a huge uh, chip for a lot of these people. And the quarterback is the one that everyone turns and pays attention to. So it'll be really, really interesting to see if this continues to be the case going forward or if this is something that kind of fizzles off. But the reality is the top two quarterbacks in the uh, 2026 class are Jared Curtis and Dia Bell. They've committed to Georgia and Texas respectively. So look back in about a year from now, uh, maybe set your clock for about a year from now on June 28th and look at those two classes. I can almost promise you they're top three or five in the country uh, because those guys are going to be huge in their recruiting uh, efforts, whether it's getting them on campus to help guys recruit or just 
talking to him through text and saying, this is a special place. You want to be here. I promise we're going to win a national title. So it's going to be fascinating to watch this develop. Definitely will be a ton of guys that absolutely have huge effects on the recruiting class because that's the, become the way of things. When you got that quarterback in place, there's a lot of things that come around it, and that absolutely helps a lot of things. And everyone turns attention when the quarterback speaks. He's the leader of the team. He's the leader of a recruiting class. And whenever anyone sees that you know top quarterback or one of the top quarterbacks reach out to them, they're going to reach back out. I can promise you that. So locking up a Tavian St. Clair, locking up a Julian Lewis, locking up a Matt Zollers or a Deuce Knight, is huge for these teams and it, it makes things so much easier not only for the coaching staff but for some of the kids making the decision because they get to hear from someone that has heard all the pitches in the world and understands that this is the one that they want to listen to so it'll be really really interesting to see all of those classes in 2026 develop and the ones that are developing this year I mean another one Keelan Russell that we should have talked about seven guys have committed to Bama since he committed so it's just crazy what a quarterback can do for a recruiting class. But we'll talk about all of the different things happening in recruiting in the next segment. There, It feels like we're just on the edge of a wave of commitments. And there's a ton of guys that I want to talk about committing this weekend. And then a couple of guys that I think might just find their way into committing over the next week or so, let's say. Um, but we're going to start with Bama because they're on an absolute tear. But stick with us and we'll be right back with that. 